Well, episode six of the 86 was definitely not an episode that had big reveals in it. I feel that it was an episode that was more telling of mental stability and the change within each of the characters themselves going forward. So definitely still an episode that has a lot of content to it. But this is my thoughts on episode six of 86. So the episode opens up with a shot of Shin as he's younger traveling around trying to find his brother and unfortunately he does eventually find his brother headless with inside of his own machine and this is kind of where the point where they're really really hitting on the idea of the reaper dullahan aspect as it seems like the ghost of his brother is seemingly haunting shin and seeking out his head so thus the idea of the dullahan and the reaper and all that kind of stuff but yeah you kind of get a shot later on where uh, after he finishes off Daya, that uh, he's definitely being haunted. And, and it could be that he's not really being haunted, he's just hearing the voice of him, but still, that's technically what they're insinuating is this haunting. It was also really interesting, they had this point in which it gives us the rest of that kind of history shot of him being strangled by his brother. And I'm I'm getting, <laughs> I'm starting to theorize here but essentially, in the clip, it uh, his brother says, it's your fault that dad and mom are dead, and that soon I will be dead. And this has me kind of wondering, again, I'm not really seeing his brother lashing out at him like this, unless Shin himself, because something special about him, probably because he can hear the voices of the, the ones that are put inside the Legion, that he's become a prime target for the Legion themselves, and maybe him being alive is causing all of these Legion to come to him. So he's almost like a Legion magnet because he's a threat. And that could be if this is a true, uh, something that really happened that his brother lashed out on him. He could be lashing out on him because he drew the Legion to them, caused his parents to get killed. And soon his brother would be killed because of that, that effect that he has on the Legion. My other theory is that this is all in his head. That his wound on his neck is self-inflicted because he blames himself for the death of his parents and his brother. So, essentially, this scene of him being struggled by his brother, yelling at him about the death of his parents and him, him soon, was all in Shin's head and he just blames himself and he self-inflicted this wound. That's my... That's my other theory, is not just that it's just as simple as his brother lashing out at him, um, but more of that. But like I think I think both of them are probably being correlation of the idea that I think the Legion are drawn to him. And this will probably be an inner conflict for him later, as he'll probably see, I guess, to kind of magnify the fact that he thinks he's this Reaper and that he's causing the death of everybody around him is because he's essentially a beacon that all of these Legion are coming after, and thus anybody that dies around him is his fault. So I think that's where they're probably going to take the direction of the story. Um, would be a, would be a safe guess in my in my opinion. But yeah, all that stuff is really interesting. Uh, definitely something I'm looking forward to as it unravels going forward. But again, obviously, a lot of the focus is around the brother. That's definitely the bond between Lena and Shin. I, I find it unfortunate at this point because at the very end they have this little scene where Lena is. Uh, <laughs> Talking about, because uh, Shin says, you know, you have sweets over there. You should you should get some sweets. And she's like, oh, you just sound just like your brother. He gave me some chocolates when when uh, we were in kind of a, when I was, uh, you know, upset or whatever. And so she's unwrapping this <laughs> chocolate and sure enough, it has hearts on it. And she starts getting all flustered. And it's like, it seems like a very one-sided relationship here because they're not really getting, not really getting much out of Shin. And, and she's just kind of going... All, uh, all cutesy, uh, <laughs> lovey-dovey on the other side of the, the comms. But yeah, unfortunate for her. I think this is kind of a one-sided situation here. On the battlefield, we get a lot of focus on artillery and the lack of mortars that the uh, 86 have. Uh, Lena kind of looked into some possible mortars that they could use, but unfortunately, the since it would require the Alba to go out and function them and it's within a minefield... Yeah, not going to happen, but I did like the idea that they she specifically was going to say this will help save the lives of the 86 and she had to rephrase it to this will help us keep our front lines from weakening basically. So she has to kind of word it in a way that doesn't put persona to 
or person uh, status to the 86. And I thought that was kind of interesting little catch that she had there to kind of correct herself in order to make it kind of seem more uh, logical to to the Alba to to risk their lives. But I, that was that point which I was kind of expecting her to half uh, half expecting her to go. Well, look, we're we're running out of people here. <laughs> you have to preserve what you have, and this is the only way you can preserve what little remaining people you have. They had a scene with Lena and her friend uh, Annette. I, I like how they keep. <laughs> I don't. I haven't mentioned it before in the in these impressions, but I really do like the aspect that Annette has this big lineup of pictures on her wall of different uh, marriage candidates. She's had like a child, basically. They she's had old men who, who ba- apparently gave her a rocking chair, so she just forwarded the gift to Lena, like, oh, here, use this rocking chair, I don't need it. Um, but yeah, they had this conversation where Lena essentially asked Annette about, you know, what would happen if there was effects of the brain by the para-raid system. And I'm I'm curious because I, maybe I missed something, but it, it didn't really imply why she was asking that. My assumption is that she's asking that based on the idea that she thinks the para-raid is affecting Shin, um, that would be more logical idea because she would be more prone to be asking it and, you know, concerned for somebody else rather than her just being concerned about herself being affected by the voices. I'm assuming this is all based on her asking this is based on the idea that she's just experienced hearing these cross voices and she thinks it's an effect of the parade system. And she's inquiring on that aspect of it, which, of course, Annette has responded of. Very casually, yeah, we're just going to pop up in the brain of the processor, look inside there and discard the body, and for the handler, we'll just give them a quick examination and send them on their way to another platoon, uh, which is, again, that's Annette. <laughs> she is still technically, I think Annette's more, yeah, technically leaning further towards what Lena believes, which is that there are people over there, but she's still technically on this side of the Alba that's very much so thinks they're just kind of garbage. So unfortunately, I'm, I'm sure eventually Annette will, will be pulled over the other side. I think that's going to be a lot, a lot around the idea of what Lena decides to do when she finally does decide to take action and either go over there or, or, you know, raise people's awareness of what's going on outside the walls. I did forget. We did have a brief scene at the very beginning uh, with, uh, I guess sometime in the past, you know, before they met Lena and everybody was together with some cherry blossoms. They mentioned the idea that they used to hate cherry blossoms because they have such a short lifespan, which is kind of parallel to them themselves. But, of course, this is like a big scene to re-get acquainted with the fact that Daya likes uh, Anju and so maybe some... I don't remember seeing Rekka in there, but obviously later on when we get the battle scene, we do lose uh, Rekka and Daya. Daya, just before dying, calls out to Anju, and this is obviously going to be very... Uh, critical against her, but I, I was, I was a little bit, uh, I, I thought Rekka's resolve at the very end was really awesome. She's like, you know, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to give you what I have. And so she, uh, you know, damages her own brain uh, with her gun, obviously. But um, yeah, that was a really cool last stand there. Obviously, since Daya didn't do the same, Shin had to, had to go and finish him off. And he, he did offer to Lana to get off the comms before he did it because, you know, she, she might not be able to handle it. I thought it was interesting because after this whole, like, the, the later scene that we had, we did see that Lena has this cork board with all the members of 86 on it. And they're the little kind of very cartoonish faces that she imagined they would look like. And she also keeps a box where she puts each of the ones that pass away inside there. And the box had five faces in it. Again, we've we know Kaya was was there when, or we know that Kaya died when Lena uh, Lena was taken over. That was her first death. Then in this episode, we had Daya and Rekka. So I'm guessing two people died off of scene. I'm I'm not sure what happened there. I I don't recall uh, somebody else. Maybe it was in that battle, and I just didn't it didn't show them, so I didn't make acknowledgement of who died, but. Sad that we see we had two that were off off camera that died, so we don't really know who they were. Or I'm not sure if we've we've got even a mention of their names, but so five total have died since Lena has taken over. I, I but this this whole corkboard thing had me thinking. I, I 
I almost like the idea that she's now she's basically putting a face to the casualties. She's putting a face to the members. And she's respecting the members that pass away by keeping even these cartoonish pictures of them in a box. Almost like she's trying to keep tally of them and never forget them, really, is the big thing. Not forget. And I'm curious if this is kind of a precursor to the idea that eventually um, Theato will draw Lena properly. (laughs) Here's Here's my prediction, my big prediction. The episode or the the point up until Theodore's de- death will be that he will draw an actual what he thinks Lena actually looks like because they they did they did show when he first drew uh, Lena in this episode as well when they first were kind of talking about yeah there's this handler that's really prim and proper she's from a rich family and she's she talks all nice and they they drew the picture of the the pig self of her I'm I'm imagining that before he dies, he will draw a proper picture of her. And I think that'll be probably his send off will be that picture of what he thinks she looks like. Now the question is going to be, does he nail it? Is he going to make that perfect picture that will actually be what she looks like or pretty dang close? Or is it going to be something that's going to be way off? I I think he's going to, I think he's going to get real close, but um, yeah, that'll be his send off obviously. But yeah, I, I think that's everything that was in this episode. Definitely a, a solid episode. Like I said, it doesn't really have really big reveals other than the fact that they don't have artillery. They did mention the idea that the Legion are... Uh, they know that they are prone to be ambushed, so now they're starting to artillery fire on like random locations at their sides. So they're they're learning, obviously. They have kind of mentioned the idea of them having the brains of of past people and and having their their um their knowledge of combat in there as well but definitely a solid episode overall definitely enjoyed it looking forward to more some cool things to theorize on as well let me know what you thought in the comments below let me know what you think about my crazy theories if i if i'm online or if i'm if i'm completely off base but hope you guys enjoy this video subscribe if you haven't already please and share this video if you can it definitely does help us out we really 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 appreciate it but i hope you all enjoyed and y'all take care